Morton's Neuroma. A brief video. What is Morton's Neuroma? A Morton's Neuroma is swelling and inflammation of a nerve that lies between two metatarsal bones of your foot. It causes pain in the ball of your foot and possibly your toes. The cause is not fully understood, but compression with tight or high-heeled shoes plays a role and certainly makes the symptoms worse. The lump, neuroma, is not dangerous and will not cause problems other than in the foot. It can sometimes be treated with simple measures, such as comfortable shoes, weight loss, insoles and simple pain tablets. If these measures do not work, an ultrasound scan may be requested and an injection of local anesthetic and corticosteroid will be tried. Sometimes, if the response is not complete, you may require more than one injection. If this is not sufficient to control your symptoms, the trapped nerve can be surgically removed. Occasionally people have Morton's neuromas in both feet. Can surgery be done as a day case operation? Yes. If you are medically fit, have someone who can collect you and look after you after the operation and you are comfortable afterwards. If you have other medical problems such as diabetes, asthma or high blood pressure, you may have to attend the preoperative assessment clinic two to six weeks before your surgery to ensure you are as fit as possible before your operation. If you do have other health issues it may be safer for you to stay in overnight after your surgery. You must stay overnight if there is no one to collect and look after you. Clinical presentation. Compression of the nerve usually causes violent pain below and between the toes. It often feels like an electric shock, spreading to the tips of the toes or up toward the ankle. It is usually brought on by walking or prolonged standing, especially if you are wearing tight shoes. When pain sets in, you need to take off the shoe and massage the foot to relieve it. There may also be a sensation of pins and needles or of reduced sensitivity between the toes. Diagnosis. In examining your foot, the surgeon tries to locate the pain. Specific tests can also be used to locate the neuroma or neuromas. The surgeon may look for a loss of sensitivity in the interdigital commissures, spaces between the toes. Ultrasound or MRI examination may be prescribed by your doctor or surgeon to image the swelling of the nerve or compression by a neighboring structure. Foot x-ray is often performed, to rule out other bone or joint pathologies. These examinations can also serve to screen for pathologies often associated with Morton's neuroma, or to differentiate it from other diseases with similar clinical signs. Possible Treatments First of all, you should adapt your footwear, with wide-toed shoes that do not compress the forefoot, avoid high heels. You may be prescribed orthopedic insoles, produced by a chiropodist podiatrist, adapted to your foot morphology, to be worn all the time inside your shoes. These are intended to prevent repeated pressure on the nerve, and thus to reduce irritation. One or several corticosteroid injections may be given, to reduce or eliminate symptoms. If effective, the relief may be temporary or definitive. These injections unfortunately do not always manage to control the pain and may prove ineffective in some patients. Your surgeon will then suggest surgery, either to release the intermetatarsal nerve, neurolysis, or to remove it, neurectomy. Without treatment, 
The pains worsen, creating ever-increasing problems for walking and footwear. A Morton's neuromase perineural fibrosis of the common interdigital nerve that occurs within the distal forefoot, most commonly between the third and fourth metatarsals. Symptoms include localized pain within the affected interspace and occasional numbness or dysesthesias that extend into the corresponding lesser toes. If conservative treatment efforts fail to adequately alleviate or control these symptoms, Surgical excision of the involved interdigital nerve may be appropriate. Care should be taken to resect the nerve at the proximal extent of the surgical exposure to minimize the risk of development of a symptomatic stump neuroma, which can occur in approximately 10% of cases. Patients should also understand that this surgical procedure will result in permanent numbness within the affected lesser toes. Morton's neuromas are felt to be secondary to perineural fibrosis that develops around the interdigital nerve. About 90% of Morton's neuromas occur in the third interspace. Only about 10% of Morton's neuromas occur in the second interspace. Therefore, remember to consider other possible causes for metatarsalgia symptoms in this area. Preoperative preparation. If circulatory status is questionable, for example, elderly patients, diabetics consider obtaining non-invasive arterial blood flow studies with absolute toe pressures. Inform patients about permanent numbness of affected toes that results from successful neuroma excision. Special instruments, position, and anesthesia. The procedure can be done under an ankle block with the use of monitored anesthesia care and intravenous sedation. Alternatively, general or other methods of regional anesthesia can be employed. A small laminar spreader, which can be placed between the respective metatarsals, facilitates exposure. Tips and Pearls Perform the ankle block prior to prepping and draping the extremity. This helps ensure that there is an adequate amount of time for the block to achieve optimal effectiveness after it has been performed. Elevating the limb for a couple of minutes before tourniquet inflation can exsanguinate the foot. When the proximal portion of the nerve is excised, be sure that a hemostat clamp is used to apply distally directed longitudinal traction on the nerve. A freer elevator can be used to retract the soft tissues proximally and then the nerve should be transected sharply as proximal as possible within the wound. These efforts allow the proximal end of the cut nerve to retract proximally within the midfoot and thereby minimize the risk of developing a symptomatic stump neuroma. Tips and Pearls The tourniquet should be deflated after the neuroma is excised and before the closure. This helps confirm that hemostasis has been obtained and that good capillary refill and viability of the respective toes are present. What to avoid? Avoid attempting to excise neuromas in adjacent interspaces at the same operative sitting. There is always a chance that the digital artery can be injured during the excision of a neuroma. If this were to happen on both sides of a toe, the viability of that toe could be compromised. Post-operative care issues. Place the foot in a gentle compression dressing. The patient is allowed to be full weight bearing in a post-operative or wooden shoe. However, weight bearing should be kept to an absolute minimum during the first 12 hours. The dressing is removed one week after surgery. However, the sutures should not be removed until three weeks after surgery to ensure that complete healing of the wound has occurred. The postoperative shoe should be used for three weeks after surgery. After this period of time, the patient may progress to an accommodative tennis shoe. Anatomic depiction of the interdigital nerve.
Operative technique. Approach. Position the patient supine on the operating room table. Place a rolled blanket beneath the ipsilateral buttock to internally rotate the limb. Place the ankle tourniquet just above the malleoli. Make a longitudinal incision over the dorsum of the involved interspace. This should start at the distal most extent of the web space and extend proximally for approximately 3 to 4 centimeters. Figure. Use careful blunt dissection to deepen the exposure down through the subcutaneous tissue. Cauterize small veins to maintain hemostasis. Identify the transverse intermetatarsal ligament. Place a small lamina spreader between the metatarsals proximal to this structure. Figure. Use careful blunt dissection to deepen the exposure down through the subcutaneous tissue. Cauterize small veins to maintain hemostasis. Identify the transverse intermetatarsal ligament. Place a small lamina spreader between the metatarsals proximal to this structure. Figure. Bluntly dissect below, plantar, to the transverse intermetatarsal ligament. Isolate the transverse intermetatarsal ligament and then divide it. Figure. Add additional distraction to the lamina spreader to separate the metatarsals. This will expose the nerve and neuroma. Neuroma excision. Gently free up the nerve and neuroma from the adjacent digital vessels with blunt dissection. Follow the terminal digital branches of the nerve into their respective toes. Transect these terminal branches sharply in the distal most extent of the wound. Proceeding in a distal to proximal direction, dissect and free up the nerve and neuroma. Sharply transect the nerve as far proximal as possible. This is done by maintaining distally directed longitudinal traction on the nerve with hemostat clamp and by retracting the proximal soft tissues with a freer elevator figure. Remove the nerve and neuroma. Inspect the interspace to confirm that you have excised all abnormal appearing. Neural tissue. Remove the lamina spreader and deflate the tourniquet. Confirm adequate hemostasis and good capillary refill of the toes. Closure. Irrigate the wound. Close only the skin using interrupted 4 to 0 nylon sutures. Apply a sterile dressing to the wound. Place the foot into a gentle compression dressing. Transfer the patient to the recovery room. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.